Ladies and gentlemen, right now at the tremendous Winter Garden Theater on Broadway in New York City, West Side Story, one of the greatest musicals of all time, is coming up to the end of its second year. Now, this musical was produced by Robert E. Griffin, Harrellis Prince, in association with Roger L. Stevens. It was based on a conception of Jerome Robbins, which I'll tell you about. The book's by Arthur Lorenz, the music by Leonard Bernstein, lyrics by Stephen Sondheim, the conductor who will be conducting it immediately for you is Max Tobman. Now, the story, what they've done here, the conception by Jerome Robbins was quite original because he translated the theme of Romeo and Juliet, or rather transplanted it into New York of the present. And instead of the Montagues and the Capulets, he pictured two kid gangs, such as the kid gangs that terrorize New York. And at this moment in the play, you're gonna see part of it here, this magnificent ballet, which is called Cool. This particular moment, a shopkeeper uptown is closing his store, comes outside and finds grouped on the, uh, on the steps of his store, a gang of kids who obviously have just had engaged in one rumble and are waiting for another gang to start another ferocious rumble. So this is the setting, here is the scene. <laughs> just one, one facet of the brilliance of West Side Story. I want you to meet Jerome Robbins later. He's out in our audience, so I want you to meet him. But any kind, you know, they've contributed so much, so vastly, to the, uh, lo the, the whole level of Broadway entertainment. That we're get, we got such a terrific kick out of having this in person on our show tonight.
I was born in Brooklyn, December 26th, 1932, under the bridge. Now the reason why that is because the, the maternity ward in the hospital was there and then they built the Brooklyn Bridge and the maternity ward was under the bridge. So the joke was, where were you born? I was born in Brooklyn, under the Brooklyn Bridge. My, my mom was a good tap dancer, so she took me to a class or something. I was about three or four years old. And she started teaching me also at home. So she really taught me, basically. One of my first performances, you could see I had a tuxedo on, I had a top hat, I had all of that. I remember it was either in a Chinese restaurant or something in those days. I came out and everybody started screaming and I did the number and I went off and I was very upset and I said, why are they all screaming and laughing? And she said, no, they like you. That's what happens when people like you. They applaud and scream. But it was quite a funny experience to have people screaming. Of course, I looked like a midget, I guess. I don't know. I was dressed like a grown-up, but a small kid, four years old. I wasn't doing too well in Bayside High School in Long Island where I was. I was very good in sports, but I... I they had a, um, a counselor, a very n nice guy, really saved my life probably. And he said, you know, there's a school in New York where they actually can teach dance and then you can do your, your academic in the morning and you dance in the afternoon. It's a new thing called high school performing arts. Why don't you go over and audition? Well, I went and audition. Of course, in those days, not too many guys were dancing. Uh, and they needed guys because they were doing ballet and martyr. But I tapped, and I, I tapped quite well. So they let me in, they said, well, you'll be able to pick it up, because you, you, you got a knack for it. So I got in, in that, and things, things were much better for me. I started to do much better. And uh, in there, believe it or not, I met um, Lila Burgess, who was the dance director out here. I don't remember him from auditions. I just, as I said, you know, we went in one at a time, so, and I was so nervous about my own dance, I, I don't think I noticed anybody, but uh, I noticed him once, <laughs> once we got there. We dated a few times, finally. You know, I had this big crush, and thank God that went away. <laughs> After high school, the first show I did was Pal Show. It was a great dance show choreographed by Robert Alton, John Murray Anderson's Almanac. Uh, after that, um, was Ankles Away with uh, the Keen Sisters, Maine with Angela Lansbury and the B. Arthur, both the toast of the town. Uh, the Rothschilds with Hal Linden, he won a Tony for the best actor in a musical. Chicago with uh, Gwen Verdon, Cheetah Rivera, and Jerry Aubach, directed by Bob Fosse. A funny thing happened to the way to the forum with uh, Mickey Rooney, one of the last shows I did. And before that, I did Sugar Babies with Mickey Rooney and Ann Miller. The fourth Broadway show I did was West Side Story. It was 1957, and it was theatrical history. <laughs> I was covering um, Riff and playing Diesel in the show. And then when Mickey Callan went out to do, uh, got a movie contract, I took over the part of Riff and played that part for approximately a year. I don't think we knew how important that show was. Of course, we didn't win the Tony. I think Music Man did that year. Ladies and gentlemen, right now at the tremendous Winter Garden Theater on Broadway in New York City, West Side Story, one of the greatest musicals of all time, is coming up to the end of its second year. On Sunday nights, um, most people would run home and tune in the Ed Sullivan Show at 8 o'clock. That was the thing that, that I think we all did, whether we were in show business or not. So a million years went by, and um, we were looking for male dancers and they always ask us do you have any do you know anyone and i thought about him and i thought yeah i wonder if he can be reached you know if he's still in new york i guess about seven years ago after i had lost my parents and it was tough on me wasn't feeling so good he was very depressed um his mother had just passed away and apparently he was very close to her and he, he just, 
just couldn't comprehend what I was saying. So I thought, oh, I can't go through this. No, I just didn't think I could do it. I was, I, I, I thought that, you know, to go out there, but actually, I had nothing keeping me where I was at that point. And then he kept calling me, and I kept trying. Then I sent him, um, you know, some video, and I sent him pictures, and he still couldn't put it together. I would call every day, and, and you know, I'd say, Lily, I don't know if I can come out. She said, you better come out, you know, you're not going to. So I remember one time specifically that she said to hey, me. Uh, why don't you just go to the home, just curl up and die. They'll wipe you up, they'll clean you up, and just forget you ever heard from me. And then she hung up on me. I know it, and, then when, and I realized what she was saying to me. So I called her back and said, don't worry, baby, I'm coming. I'm right there, I'll be there. I'll be there next week. And, and I came out and auditioned, and fortunately enough that they did hire me. It's fine for myself, even the guys that I know on the show and the girls, I see that they're getting better as we go along, you know? You get better, you get, you get slicker. It's like a good ball player who's used to throw the ball 100 miles an hour. Now he's only 80, but he's more clever and he's striking everybody out. Well, we're the same way. I mean, we may not be doing all of the tricks that we used to do, uh, but we, um, we're able to, to sell it. The show brought a lot of us back. I'm not alone here, because the movement is life. We just want to keep performing and laughing and, and doing what's what we're doing. We're really living and um, we're doing what we love, even though sometimes it's hard work. I mean, but you know, when it's over, there's a great feeling of satisfaction. People leave the theater. Uh, you're just amazed at how thankful they are that they, they've seen the show, they love what you did, they, they just relate to the show so strongly. They, um, they, they compliment you so much you can hardly put your hat back on. My eyes are crying during the whole well, we usually cry, but it's only in rehearsal. <laughs> Thanks You're a wonderful. Lot. We really appreciate it. To finally be able, have an opportunity to share your talent in your life, where you, th where at, at a certain point you were ready to kind of give up the, the performance end of it, and you're actually coming back, and you realize that you have a lot more to offer, and this is a format where you can actually go out and, and perform and, and, and do the things that that, that you hadn't done in the past or things that you thought you've lost and all of a sudden you realize that you've gained even twice as much and you feel, feel that you really um, are, in, are enjoying life again because there, there are times in people's life after all I'm 77 that you think that maybe I'm not going to enjoy life as much and actually it's very funny because I'm enjoying life more than ever. The Follies really have brought me back to life. So it's pretty exciting. It's a great life. <laughs>